Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the really lovely stuff. This is the AAS Education Series. And I am super happy to have Tom Hockey with us today. Hey, Tom. Hi, Frank. Uh, welcome to my uh, dungeon of demonstration here. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's it's my downstairs basement office, but that, that had a certain alliteration to it. I had to use it. It's very cool looking. And Tom, where is your basement located at? Um, I am in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Uh, not very far from where I hang out, which is the University of Northern Iowa. Cool. Uh, it is a 20-minute um, commute that way by foot. Uh Big city dwellers like yourself uh, become envious of that. But of course, I'm envious of you today because of, b between here and there is about a foot of snow. I was going to say, uh, I believe it is. Uh, so it's December 27th, 2022, as we record this. And I do believe the Midwest is getting a very big cold snap. Uh, we got pounded for Christmas and uh, made me think of other Christmases in my hometown of... Uh, the the valley there near near phoenix uh before did, did i had discovered up? this snow stuff <laughs> well you must have gone up to flagstaff so where where did you grow up in phoenix uh, uh glendale glendale uh, okay. west side yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. well you must have made a trip other side of the, the track you must have made a trip or two up the flagstaff to see some snow at some point but could then hurry back <laughs> and hurry back into the world <laughs> This last trip to the snow has lasted for 35 years. There you go. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. No, actually, this is, a, yeah, the storm we had here is atypical for this time of uh, year. So even we Iowans are grousing. Yeah, there you go. Tom, I got to admire your uh, your album covers there. Tubular bells there on the, on the left there. So, indeed. That looks like an actual vinyl record. They are in indeed. My son gave me a uh, a turn table. I had one since I don't know what happened to mine back in the day, and uh, so yeah, got out the old records, and there's just something fun about the final the kinesthetics <laughs> of putting it on and running it and <laughs> and that sort of thing. And uh, I've got a headset, so I don't uh, bother my family uh, too much with. Uh, Tubular uh, bills of ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very and, cool. And, and and stuff along that line. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. And Tom, uh, what do you like to do for education activities? Well, a bunch of things, but what I wanted to talk to everybody about today was uh classroom demonstrations. Ooh, those are always good. <laughs> well, it's based on envy. If you uh, teach introductory astronomy, like I've done uh, a, a time or two, you uh, don't have the advantages of somebody teaching introductory chemistry, where you pour one thing into another and it bubbles <laughs> over. Oh, yeah, or, or biology, oh, some squiggly thing. <laughs> uh, of course, so much, with the exception of occasional meteor, is vicarious. So right. uh, I wanted to... Uh, uh, over the years, uh, I put together a, a set of uh, uh, demonstrations uh, in lieu of that. Cool. Uh, I want there to be something that the students can get in the class that they can't just get out of a textbook or the PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, but there's plenty of that in my class and hand waving, me talking and that sort of thing, too. But uh, something that they're going to see live that... Uh, maybe illustrates things in a different way and maybe something they didn't expect. That's awesome. Let's do some. Okay. Uh, for today, I dug out some samples from different uh, parts of my course, which is a very standard uh, uh, in-out progression introductory astronomy class at a okay. mid-sized comprehensive university, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Here's one, not Ooh, coincidentally, directly behind me. Demo tray. This is so awesome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> students, of course, have difficulty with uh, alternate states of, of matter. This is cool. Uh, 
I begin with a okay. um, in, in, with a introductory um, uh, exercise, a little toy scale here. That's all I really needed. And I've got two cups. One of these cups is it's got something filled in it. with sand, Damn. so I can move move them around and show them. Oh. That that's sand, right? And then I've got another one here that is filled with glass in the form Ooh. of just toy models. So I can wander around the classroom and show them. I'm not pulling anything. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. This is this. It's the same cup and it's filled to the same level and that sort of thing. So okay. when I weigh them, then the question becomes. Uh, which is going to be heavier, the sand, the marbles, or are they going to, because essentially sand and glass is the same thing, are they going to be even? And I remind my students we don't normally do science by taking a vote, but in this particular case, to, I'll vote. I'll vote. to get them involved, yeah. Uh, and we usually Lickers. have people in three, three of those categories. So uh, people can probably guess what the... What the result will be? Yeah, that's overwhelmingly taken over by the, the sand. Yeah, yeah, uh, very cool, very cool. So I, I talked to one of the students who voted for the sand and voted for the, and, and it gets very quickly to the point that uh, I have to be careful with my words because, of course, this cup is not filled with just marbles. It's also filled with air, yeah, you know, the interstitial space in between. And we admit that there is probably some of that too with the with the there sand, is. but it it's packed more efficiency. So that's our our that's lead in to yeah to <laughs> other forms of matter at uh, uh, when we talk about the end of stellar evolution. Ooh. Now you, you could okay. you probably wouldn't even need the cups, but uh, mm. more dramatic the more mass you have. You you know you saw how this went down so hard. And you can seal them up pretty easy with a baggie. Very nice. Do you use do you use clickers in your classroom for voting? Uh no, no. Uh we uh, hands. do the uh, the uh, old fashioned raise your hand. Raise your hand. And if yeah. you get students interested enough, they actually uh they actually yeah. do it. I tell them the only people who are wrong are the people who didn't raise their hand for didn't anything. Any. Can't make up their minds. <laughs> um very cool. That uh, exploratory gets us into this three atoms. Now, physicists are going to howl. That's not really what atoms look like. Yeah, well, yeah. Phyllis, I mean, the whole idea of what atoms look like, that's a little tricky, too. So Indeed. we're going to pick our battles. This is what uh, the students have been taught going in some sort of uh, orbital uh, uh, affair here. Mm -hmm. And each of these Four happens... Systems. Happens to be a carbon atom. Uh, you can check me out. I've got uh, just six standard six. models here. And yeah, did a color code thing. The nucleus is. Uh, uh, the, I, I did a yeah. I did a twenty. A, a, a and um, the thing that has to be yes uh, repeated over and over again that we're we're not trying. We're introducing a concept here not uh, actual scale, yeah. that in fact, this is all wrong. Electrons are much smaller than nuclear particles. There's a lot more empty space in atoms and atoms this close together would be, well, pretty darn awesome. close together. We'll get some C we're C we're going. conceding all of, all of that there. But the idea is that this would be a normal matter. So when we have a white dwarf Ooh. form, into a degenerate okay. matter, mm -hmm. we get rid of all that e empty space that most things we think of as solid are really filled of. And I point around, you know, yeah. Yeah. I had his, their instructors that, that is mostly empty space, right? Degenerate a chuckle uh, out of, uh, of that to, in the case of uh, normal matter being empty space. Cool. Uh, this then, would be what happens when you form a neutron star. Ooh. Now, again, 
Okay. Much, much more condensed than this. But it gets the idea that you're taking uh, available oh, space out right. Yeah, just mm -hmm. in this jar here. I call it neutronium out of a comic book somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Very I good. Don't, I don't Very actually you know, use that on a test or something, but it's handy sometimes, right, to talk about the stuff neutron stars are made of. Well, okay. Really? Uh, yep. Uh, the, uh, I, I'm sorry, not the, the, the neutronium degenerate matter. Uh, mm -hmm. For neutronium, I do use that. Uh, for the next stage, <laughs> here we go. So, yeah, this is my, my made-up neutronium. So we take this, and overwhelming power of gravity now not only condenses the star through the uh, condensed matter stage, but into neutronium. I've uh, erased the color code. I've reduced the periodic table, which hangs in every good classroom, right? Yeah, absolutely. One sure. box here sure. of this uh, of this stuff, whatever you want to uh, call it. And again, the difference in size is tremendously greater than I can illustrate here. Absolutely. Uh, if you've noticed subtly, I've switched materials here to a... Uh, styrofoam ball of, oh i didn't see that okay uh, yeah of somewhat arbitrary size here okay uh, for a little theater what happens when gravity overwhelms even the structural forces involved here where if people don't mind me skipping the internal forces of cork matter or something like that sure uh, what happens is yeah right nice ah <laughs> It very good. Littler and littler, and we let some of it drop uh, off. Very good. And we're left with, of course, a mere Dot. example of a of a, a very a cool. Point. Again, the 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 scale not being the point, like that. but rather the uh, the concept. Yeah, I like that one. I like to use the styrofoam. That was good. These are called uh, decor orbs. That uh, I I don't know what they're really. Four. And so at the home goods stores, they're almost always on half price. Okay. This is, this is good. Um, <laughs> so it so is carbon, because we've talked about that previously and its importance in making, well, us. Uh, the um, the nuclei pretty. here, I use beads. They're not as heavy, easier to hang from the thread, tied it together. You wouldn't have to use a zip tie. Uh, that was me being lazy. So did did you make those? Did you yeah. make those, those models? Not not the the, the the spheres, but everything else. Yeah, and then just whatever you have lying around. I had some clamps cool. here to make stands. Mm -hmm. The thing, regular jar here. Just use beads. Very um, nice. nice and inexpensive. I, cool. I I like the idea in all my demonstrations of using uh, unsurprising materials. Uh, well, these are a little out there, but. <laughs> uh, no, right. go down to the store and see it uh in other words that it's not some my magic it's the magical box effect you know uh that they it's something something specifically designed perhaps to demonstrate some concept but they've never seen it before so it's kind of magic cool uh here there's no magic they see what cheap junk <laughs> the demonstration is made out of there must be some other point that i'm making yeah one would think very good i like it now we'll we'll I, I'm, I'm impressed by the 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 demo table too the rolling demo table pretty good well uh it's con confined by the the space here it seems like i've disappeared here you can put a uh uh, a commercial here in Tim while I get my next cart. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's got multiple carts. This is very good. <laughs> that's that's the big one. Yeah. So while you're while you're off screen, uh, Tom, how many how many? What's a typical enrollment in your in your courses? Uh, I'm fortunate that our lecture hall only holds seventy. That's good. So uh, okay. a typical enrollment uh, for whatever reason uh, tends to be. To be seventy, mm -hmm. uh, freshman course, of course. Uh, yep. Level here, so um, yeah, this one is a a little a little smaller. I I I, I should add uh, 
like Kepler explaining to his audience uh, how he came across his laws. Um, I started by, you know, epoxying each marble on those spheres and you have to wait to dry and it makes Ooh. them taking forever. And then I discovered that wonderful stuff called tacky putty. Ah. You can make anything stick on anything. So you can see a lot of tacky putty today. Okay. Um, uh, next subject is uh, the sizes of the planets. This is an introductory uh, thing at the beginning of a lecture. As everybody knows, we're all at fault because the printed pictures we show are usually not to scale um, in books and that sort of thing. So for once, I'd like to see them see the solar system, my students, uh, to the actual scale size we're ignoring okay. distance right okay. now okay. and so i claim i was at the uh, grocery store pondering this over and one thing I led see. to another <laughs> and uh some of you who've been in this grocery store business know where i'm i'm uh coming from on this pretend that the first planet and i'll ask them to recall and name what the first planet is okay is this p here there you go look at the mercury okay and i can see that is actually a p there yeah yeah if mercury is p size yeah. then the next planet we come up That's with venus is and I understand the great size. There we go, the grocery store. Oh, great. I was out the, the store today uh, here uh, constructing what I call Not my <laughs> solar system salad. Uh, we all hear about twin planet and all that. In size, that's true. The Earth then would be a another one of these. Another grape. Grapes. Yeah, yeah. Mars gets a little tricky. It's a smaller grape. It's actually a blueberry. A blueberry. Awesome. This is a salad. Whatever a fruit salad. About, except me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's not a grape. It's a blueberry. Uh, there. And at this time, I have to apologize to my students, particularly yeah. those in the back. Why am I making them go through this? Seeing these tiny really? little things. They're hard to see even on a video. Um Wow. I say, the reason is what is coming next. Hmm. I Asteroid? don't have a, a lot of choice. Jupiter. <laughs> or at a head of, of Jupiter great. there. And uh, yeah. these are pretty close to scale. Yeah. Uh, Saturn there from some nice citrus. Big old grapefruit. Yep. Uh, the planets Uranus and Neptune Fair are enough. about the same size. I mean, you so use a couple there. of key lines. Oh, there we go. For them. Two of them. I mentioned solar system salad is seasonal. There uh, we go. The, the ratio right of here. diameters is maybe even a little greater yeah. than I've been able to portray here. I got a watermelon. We could, <laughs> I could take some pepper and Sprinkle it between Mars and Jupiter. And the asteroid <laughs> For the asteroids, very good. That would be silly, right? <laughs> As opposed to whatever I'm doing here. Yeah, right. Very cool. Uh, and then, of course, um, remind them that they call it the solar system for a reason. Uh, this is easy uh -oh. to do here in Iowa. I asked them to think of the largest county fair winning jack lantern. Oh, country. those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. ever seen. Thousand pound make pumpkin. Them the door of the building, and that gives them some idea of what sun size to this scale would be. Yeah, and then I also tell them I'm not intending oh, to waste okay. food. I'm going to take a planet to lunch. <laughs> okay, that's that's my lunch. <laughs> now yeah. you could argue I'm doing it backwards because the uh, the exploratory is 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 coming second. That's great for for diameter. But of course, more important, because we're going to get into density mm -hmm. of the planets, is okay. volume. So we pretend that the Earth is the size 
of, again, a standard size play marble. Okay. Uh, About the right density. Those who recognize the ammo box will get the, the joke. Uh, we're going to see how many Earths we can fit into the planet Saturn. There you go. Okay. So here is you will have. my planet Saturn here. This bowl, you know, roughly. I, I, I like the equatorial bulge. Very good. <laughs> and uh, to deposit them, we have uh, what we call our planet bong. Uh, depending on the culture on your campus, <laughs> whether you could get away with that yeah. or or not here. Now, normally I wouldn't be doing this. I would be getting students into the to act um, to, mm -hmm. to do this. Sure. Um, sure. It, it only takes a, a couple of practices to get about ten marbles in your hand okay. and dump them in here. Boing. And then there's always somebody with a calculator and they have to, it's a way of sneaking some math in. They have mm -hmm. to count how many handfuls. Yeah. Yeah. Before we actually do this, of course, everybody's given an opportunity to guess what that number might be. And also as the process continues to revise. Oh, you get to refine math. your guess. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And we're not going to do the whole thing but uh, indeed, you get mm -hmm. about 500 ish. Yeah, sure. yeah. It's often published that uh, Saturn is uh, 700, that you, that you can fit 700 uh, or uh, uh, between 700 and 800, depending on your source, Earths Thanks. into Saturn. But of course, they're simply dividing one by the other. When students think of a planet inside a planet, this is what they're thinking of. Yeah, the whole sphere with the interstitial space and and that kind of, of thing. Uh, yep. This uh, there's there's a, a warning to be given here. You need thick glass. Uh, this yeah. one is yes. called a terrarium, or you'll bust it out. With I was worried about that. Marbles. Yeah. Um, the uh, I'll show you the. Uh, I've taken this. Uh, Household uh, funnel and oh, know, cut this off so it'll fit yeah. into the tubing. And right. the tubing yeah. I've even flanged. That's all hid by the mm. duct tape so that there, it won't catch or anything. So yeah. there's nothing really stopping it. It'll it speeds things up. But that those marble they're slamming in there. But they're advancing the in there. Yep. Not to get too close to the side. I've even made a little target What's the out of a furniture uh, slider. Here, because I have had it happen, smash the, smash the bowl, and it's oh yeah, oh yeah, rather distracting to put it mildly. Yeah, when it when that happens, second, yeah. Why use the marbles still then? Well, because they go quickly uh, through the the tube, and it speeds up the uh, experiment. People yeah. ask me, by the way, why I'm not doing Jupiter mm -hmm. instead okay. of Saturn. Okay. One of the reasons is safety. Uh, a, a bowl with that money, marbles in it. Uh, but also practical. I haven't found the perfect bowl for Jupiter's size, and it that gets to be a little long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an yeah, exercise. Absolutely. But uh, pedagogically, you know, everybody Same. comes in knowing that Jupiter is the big planet, right? Mm -hmm. And then you mention Saturn, and Saturn is the planet with the rings, and forgetting that it's pretty darn big too. It's good size. Yep. So I say, you know, and this is Close. just uh, just Saturn. It leads into a discussion about the giant planets and how Saturn uh, kind of plays second fiddle to Jupiter, but has there's a lot of interesting things going on there too. Cool. Very nice. Uh, as instructor, the may, uh, before okay. you, before you, if you do this before you leave, check around for escape marbles so nobody. Oh yeah. It's on one as they as they exit, or at least if anybody's gonna do the tripping, that it's gonna be that it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Not a student. Exactly. Uh one word about the tubing. Um about an inch and a quarter. Uh this 
uh, style with the, the the matrix of material keeps it uh, from puckering up. Yeah, stays, or collapsing. Exactly. It stays uh, spherical profile. Uh, there's about two feet of it here. Uh, but it's got some uh, 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 thickness to it. I mentioned you have to... Yeah, uh, to you can get that for like a, a buck or two at a hardware store. Yeah, which is a, which is exactly what I what I did on that. Mm -hmm. It still wants to always curve from you know at the hardware store that reel they store it on. So mm -hmm. I happen to have just a metal bar that I when I'm storing this thing, ah. I shove this up in and keep it as straight as I I can. Right. Otherwise, it will tend to curl. Yeah. Ah, want to see something else? I do. Oh, I, I don't know what I would have said if you had said no. Okay. Well, I'm wondering if you have a third cart. I, oh, oh, of course I have a third <laughs> cart. <laughs> Much to my wife's chagrin, I'm sure. <clears throat> I got many carts. Now, this one, okay. the okay. Uh, room lights, the uh, camera lights I've got on are going to thwart us. So I'm going to turn them off. Okay. And even yeah. then, the diaphragm in the camera is going to to fight oh, to so maintain even illumination. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. That's a, wow. A, a, a kind of a lame way of saying this looks better in uh, in, in reality. It has to do with the well, we'll find uh, out. relationship between luminosity, brightness and distance, the three of which students are least uh, familiar with being luminosity, even though a measure of luminosity, right, is stamped on every light bulb. I have in fact written, you know, on the wall, but, you know, that's a 40 watt light bulb. So uh, again, this is an exploratory to start out with, uh, called the light bulb game, the okay. lucky <laughs> contestants among the students they will be shown uh, each of the three light bulbs, and then I'll mix them up or, or, or turn on one of the bulbs, and they have to tell me which one it is. Okay. I admit it's not much of a, of a game, but it, it, it's, it's, it's something, yeah. All good. Okay, so first... It's engagement, that's what matters. Yeah. First we switch these guys okay. off here. Oh, there'll be a little light. No, coming good. in the partially covered windows. A sunny day today, which is nice. Ooh, oh, you know. So um, I have chosen bulbs that are uh, a fairly low wattage. That's up to That's good, we don't get people's uh, how they want to do it. But you can get bulbs that are different sizes. So the physical size doesn't automatically oh, sure. uh, yeah, yeah. have to flip the... Uh, the, uh, <laughs> power strip here. Uh, here, they can't use that trustworthy to decide what it is. Uh, which one of the, right, the right bulbs on. it is? Right size with luminosity. There's one. Right. Yeah. So I give them a look at the, you know, which seems like it's going to be a really easy game. Fifteen what bulb, and then. A 25 watt bulb. I guess mm -hmm. it's brighter. Uh, it's and, a then, brighter. and then that's the 40. Okay. And so yeah, yeah. my classroom has no windows. We can darken it way down. So I do this. I at least pretend to. Oh, move around. Move. there you go. The, these things here and ask the student which particular light bulb it is and to answer as quickly as possible. Put a little stress on it. Even so, they oh yeah, they almost always get the the fifteen, you know, a contestant, that sort of thing. So the next contestant, this is on this one. I've got to see the do the same thing uh, as quickly as possible. Identify the light bulb. You we got one over there. Whoa! And. That's a little bumper. <laughs> yeah, I put the pressure on. Come on, come on. What is that? That, that, that? And sometimes they even get oh, it wrong. Good, good. Because I've totally set them up, which mm -hmm. I apologize mm -hmm. for. Uh, I have chosen ahead of time a student 
uh, to who is at a very different distance. For instance, if that light I just turned on was in the uh, back of the classroom, yeah. the demo in the front, I picked a you know, yeah. front seat student or something. So all of a sudden, unexpectedly, they're having to deal with the distance, how the distance. that's affecting yep. the, the brightness. Correct. There. Yep. Uh, and uh, I mean, sometimes they still get it right, but uh, the point is is made yes. that uh, one of the things that affects the brightness of stars in the sky is distance. There's another thing, though. Okay. Let me replace a couple of these bulbs with two identical bulbs. I, you know, I tell them I bought them side by side at the at the hardware store. Hardware and grocery stores. Awesome. Underwaters. Or, or yeah, yeah. Um, Sixty water bulbs. Oh, bulbs. I purposely yeah, yeah. picked these globular nice big ones bulbs, so and I, i'm not going to mess with the distance and you know they're the same mm -hmm. wattage and all of that sort of thing though mm -hmm. i have modified one of the bulbs yes in a certain way you have okay once again right. for just greater dramatic yeah effect yeah we turn off the, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. ambient light Okay, okay, good. Flip these on both at the same time here. Right. Cool. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. The, the camera's going to fight us. Here, it's, but, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, uh, yeah. It. As you may have noticed, of course, half of the bulb I have, have painted out. Yes. So they're in the classroom. It's clear that uh, this bulb is not doing, a good, I'd have them farther apart, is not doing as good a job and right. illuminating as this one so we talk about why that might be uh they get to uh you know i've but somehow this is covered right so there's less what available to shine uh -huh. from mm -hmm. this one and this one and we get to the idea of a barrier but if yes. you're talking about a sphere like this there you go area equates to size volume stars can be of different sizes yes and and it's as simple as that um i then talk about in our room uh that is illuminated by panels of fluorescent lights by flipping different switches i can light up they're all identical i can light up more of the ceiling effectively increasing the area that's lit and making the room brighter nice very good there is of course another way to make my classroom brighter. And that is the dimmer switch on some cam lights we have in the ceiling, which of course there uh, with dimmer switches, you're changing the temperature. Yeah, effectively, yes. And, and the, the third thing that can affect the brightness of a star, so important temperature, that's, that's a separate lesson. Indeed it is. Sigma T to the fourth. Very cool. Uh, These are great, Tom. Um, okay, so we got none of which, uh, you know, none of which I spent a lot of money on heights. either. I should hasten to add, they're from uh, the kinds of stores that people will in pretty much whatever town in America you're you're from. The kind of stores that you will have access to. Uh, not to, you know, you could, but nothing here is uh amazon right right pre-made crank it out for we me. have time for one more quick one frank <laughs> we do okay I like uh, this great. is a quick one because unlike most of my demonstrations you know i like there to be some student participation or Absolutely. at least some kinesthetic uh, aspect and that is i admit is not the case now we're early in my course where we do a little bit of astronomy okay. the concept of eudoxus and aristotle's celestial spheres ah, okay. so i decided i wanted to 
actually build one because you know there's you can Ooh. find models but they tend to be opaque like russian dolls matrushkas <laughs> and this one actually is crystalline spheres uh glass if you can oh that. very good very uh, good uh, crystal mm -hmm. here so <laughs> i'll show you what you're looking at mm -hmm. uh i figure every astronomy teacher has a a little earth model line right there you go something like that or you draw it very good and there's those good bowls here. uh has a nice. planet uh -huh. stuck on it in an arbitrary place a big marble here good and, and then the outermost here. sphere covered with stars right not what stars really look like but that's oh, red. it's symbolic and uh orange and I and I was I'm no artist, so I made sure to use vis-a-vis -vis markers, the kind that fit <laughs> well to glass, but uh, can be erased. Um, are those are those glass or are those acrylic or what are those? These are these are glass. Okay. Here, the Earth is standing on. For those of a certain age, may have seen these before. These little things to keep receipts on. Uh huh. And, uh, this uh -huh. is sort they're just pointy things, and you could say. Uh, Tom, why not just hammer a nail into a board to stick the earth on? Yes, but uh, it's hard to find a, a thin nail that's unobtrusive, that's long, that at least I don't bend. Uh, the the styrofoam stage, styrofoam and toothpicks, uh -huh, uh -huh. you might find over-engineered, but I uh -huh. wanted to try to get the earth in the center Yep. of each okay, of the three spheres right your center the example planet right. ones in the outer most we're the center of the universe of course okay yeah nobody's going to notice that past the fourth row but i just wanted to no wanted it's good to and the stand is, the stand is optional too it's just an old drawer that i happen to have you could build a box or or not uh not yeah, that at all your, so. uh, macgyver is here <laughs> so yes here and this is where that putty stuff comes in so handy because as we know from spherical geometry, trying to stick a sphere uh -huh. marble onto a spherical bowl leaves you with one point. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And uh, the glue right. just wasn't. Got it. The glue wasn't hacking it. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is this is one of the the early ones that that got me started. Ooh, I got an idea. Somehow you ought to figure out a way to make one of those interior spheres rotate. Ah, uh, oh, that would like, be so cool. Like the whole, yeah, the whole celestial sphere rotating. I, I mean, that's obviously going to take a little motor or something, but it would be cool if it, if it kind of rotated to get the idea that uh, the Earth was at the middle and everything rotated around the Earth. I, I've got it. I'll call it the Tim Sphere. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important, I think, because through so much of history, first of all, my students have taken, probably taken a required humanities class. They haven't heard of Eudoxus. They have heard of Aristotle. Yeah. And the fact that for so long in history, uh, this is the astronomy they would yeah. be taught. They would be their students. It's a university 500 years ago. Looks pretty much like what we do. And they yeah. would be taught that this is how, how it all works. First value. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Tom, I love this. Those were really great. How many, um, uh, do you do like a one demonstration per lecture? So do you have like 30, 40, 50 of these things lying? Um, 30, 40. The, the term what? demonstration actually covers, in my mind, three different things. Okay. Uh, one is examples, mainly physics stuff. Mm -hmm. um, another is models, like I just showed you what it might have been like. Uh -huh. and, okay. and the third is is like a visual metaphor. Uh, I wouldn't absolutely okay. have to do, but instead of saying pretend that, I actually use some idea, some like physical prop. Right. Uh, and like I didn't do any of those today. If you count all three of those, uh, I do about... Uh, 10 a week oh wow so okay. yes a, a lecture would have Ten have multiple uh demonstrations in it wow and so 15 week semester yeah i do about 130 demonstrations i was gonna say wow. some, wow. some uh wow. very trivial 
uh, you know, grab your grab your pencil, put it down, close one eye, grab it. Oops, not quite as easy with only one eye. Lead into parallax. Mm -hmm. Parallax, yep. Mm -hmm. Two things that uh, are a little more elaborate. Very nice. Very cool. I really like the... Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody doing so many demos, but I really appreciate it. It's very good. I like it. it gives me my, some ideas. My next <laughs> one is uh, a, a, a one that is not at all original, as I, I, I don't even know what's original anymore. Uh, but everybody's seen it. The... Uh, uh and get momentum exercise where you take a bicycle oh. wheel and it, it turns even though uh it's mm -hmm. orthogonal to the floor um yeah. except usually when you see it like an, on uh, youtube uh the the professor calls their assistant over to hold it while they get it going rotating right well how, how many professors really do have an in-classroom assistant every time you don't don't have to answer that question, but I know. Okay, I'm up. <laughs> so I, I'm going to build a, uh, a a thing you can set the device on, and then I'm going to use a drill to get it spinning. Got it. Okay. Uh huh. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 this one I don't want to get students involved in because who knows what it's going to end up. But <laughs> yeah, and you got a motor. <laughs> when I on. take it off that off that holder, so that's that's the next one. Very good. Oh, so you're you're already planning your next ones. Very good. <laughs> and that might push my my rule is uh, that every, every demonstration you saw here, uh, well under a hundred bucks, um, that might push it a little bit. Uh, yeah. Once you get into motors, that will bump it up a little bit. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But very cool. Um, yeah. And some of these, uh, at least even of the ones you showed today, you know, for those who are teaching online, there are still some. Um, um, ways to do these demos. And in fact, let me ask, when, when COVID was happening in 2021, um, and you were probably teaching online? Yes, I was. And did you do your demos there as well? Yeah, I was teaching right here. Um, I tried to mimic the <laughs> classroom stable. experience as much as I could. So yes, that included uh, uh, the demos, 90% uh, 90, 90 of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. Good. In addition to some that were built specifically for that situation. Oh, okay. Such as, give me a, one example of one that was built specifically for an online. Well, we're I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't a lot of detail, spot. but uh, uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one to notice that uh, spectroscopy is kind of difficult mm -hmm. on on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have all your students put on their oh, their little glasses, their uh, right, their like, diffraction like, grass and yeah. two tubes and and that uh, and that sort of uh -huh. thing. So yeah, that that required some thinking. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, Tom, I want to thank you so much for taking the time and sharing uh, some of the things you do in the classroom and some of your awesome, inexpensive demos. Just getting started. <laughs> Very cool. You ought to do an My e wife says I need a hobby. Well, hey. You right? should do uh you should do an ebook or something on on you know astronomy demos or something like that. Someone would have to demo to me how you would do that. Yes. Yeah, there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> demo on demos. Very cool. All righty. Tom, thank you so much once again for walking us through your, your demos. Very nice. Thanks for having me. And that'll do everyone, and I hope this makes your astronomy day just a little bit better, and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.